All right, Sci-Fi Express Lane. I'm back. Got some content to actually upload. Uh, this is Jeff Carroll, writer, comic book creator, filmmaker. So um, I have some stuff that I want to upload, but today I want to talk about um, comic book advertisements and creative ways to um, get your comic books funded. Okay, that's probably really what it all goes down to. Um, and the philosophy behind it and why, you know, I encourage other creators to do kind of what I'm doing and what I see, you know, other companies doing, right? I just got the um, Black Science Fiction Society uh, director, creator, founder, um, Jarvis Sheffield's first um, comic book. And he got it funded through the use of advertisement. And I want to talk about that. Um, I started making comic books in 2007, and um, I spent close to $3,000 on a comic book that, at the time, you know, that was just illustrations. At the time, it cost about a dollar fifty per comic, maybe even a dollar per comic to print up, which is ridiculous when you think of the rates now. Uh, however, comic books at the time were about two dollars, two ninety nine, and um, at the comic book store. So the overhead was still tight. Um, it wasn't until <coughs> around two nineteen, two eighteen, that the um, price for comics catch up to a good rate for people who uh, print and make their own comics, and that was around four fifty, three ninety nine, four fifty. Comic book uh, prices at that time, printing, were around two dollars. You know, now they're about three dollars, right? For a uh, twenty-eight page, thirty-two page comic, all right. Um, which is, you know, you're giving yourself front, back cover, and then twenty-five pages of story. You know, twenty to twenty-five pages. You know, um, so that's where you run now. You know, for creators and for indie people, that's, you know, we're paying around $3 a comic. And so when you see us at the stores, we're selling an autograph, we're selling the whole experience for about $6, which is maybe a dollar over, um, a dollar over uh, the um, other retailers. But I've seen some other comics over $4.99. Um, they may be a little longer, but I've seen them. They're not double issues. They're not 52 pages, right? They may be 36 or something like that. Anyway, um, that's cool. However, you know, when you're, when you're paying, this was in nine, uh, 2007, paid um, that much for a comic book. And, um, you know, it's not about the illustration style only, but it was definitely... Um, good illustration style, right? Um, shout out to Eric um, Allen Nelson. However, you know, for somebody making a dollar profit for comic, or when you sell it, like at that time, I think I was selling for $5. I made uh, about $2, maybe, you know, that would take me close to 1,500 comics to break even. That is a lot of comics. And not to mention, if you're trying to print up, you know, 15, 2,000, yeah, the price drops, but that becomes an expensive. That, you know, so now you're looking at 2,000 extra dollars or $2,500 to print 2,000 comics. No, you're looking at 3,000. So at the end of the day, you're at 6,000 close to $7,000 for one comic book, you know, and now you've got to sell those. If you're making a dollar or $2, that's 3,000 comics. That's ridiculous. It's, it just becomes really hard to do that. But then, if you, if you look at how valuable your comic book is, right, and you know, when you look at an ad in a comic book, it's like an ad in a magazine or a book. Those comics become collector comics. People read them, pass them on to other people. They share them, you know. Even if they're a collector, 
there's more than one person that's reading it, especially independent indie comics, you know. Um, if they're buying it to collect it, then they buy one to, to read and the other one to collect. But, you know, your comments get read more than once. That's more than the average hits on a flyer. So when you look at magazines, they're charging, you know, they're thousands printed. But, you know, magazines, independent magazines, be charging about $1,000 a page. You know, not to mention back cover, inside cover, inside back cover. So you look at those rates. That's what people's paying. And in, in the magazines you see in Barnes & Nobles, forget about it. In the on, the, on the store shelves, you're looking at fifteen to $20,000. Easy, right? Just for an ad, full page ad. And then you subdivide that, you know. So I thought of my comic books uh, advertisement when I went, uh, when I was working at school and I was raising boosters for the yearbook. And I said, wow, I need to do boosters for my comic book. And it really helped things out. I was able to do boosters for as little as $25, $30. Get the business card in the comic book. And that really helped. That turned that page, 10, 10 ads into a $300 page. $300 page on a, a print run, you know, that may cost three to $600. Covers half your print run. And then if you get another page like that, now that eliminates the printing cost, okay? Um, I have had, damn, why is it too I gotta take this up. I have had advertisers like my distributor and um, um, uh, rehab and other places, um, First Republic, a restaurant, you know, they have rolled with me from my first Kickstarter and, you know, it covers it. I come into Kickstarter with $500 worth of ads already in the Kickstarter. You know, um, whatever else I can raise is is, is is excellent. Then I do um, the booster page. The booster page brings me in a couple hundred dollars, right? Um, then I started doing uh, merchant rewards. And the merchant rewards were, you know, you buy in bulk and you know I even give the booster page um, to the merchants so they'll put there in there sometimes it's a little tight because they don't always buy but if you get two or three that's still good my merchant reward is 75 to um, right now it's 85 dollars because on this Kickstarter you're getting 21 comics so you're getting a little bit more and you get merchant you get posters you get everything that you might need to market the comic book in the store. And if I can get there, I'm going to do a signing, you know. Um, and, you know, I'll, of course, I promote the store on the internet. But, you know, for the most part, you're getting that, you're getting that um, discounted, you get bulk, and, you know, it's cool. And some, you know, there are, are comic book stores that do have indie um, shelves, you know, and those need diversity too. So just like, you know, I'm coming into a store, it don't have to be a black store. They need diversity on those shelves. So I talk to them. So um, how that works, you know, I sell interior pages. But one of the things, there's a lot of blowback for comic book ads. Like, oh my God, you got ads in your comic books? You know, people attack ads like it's AI uh, illustration designs. But in reality... Yo, forget those people that don't understand what you have to do to um, raise money for your comic. Yo, I understand that they have a problem with ads. Like, I talked to a retailer yesterday, kind of, um, um, uh, what do you call it, um, got me to want to, you know, make this video. But, you know, the illustrator was like, nah, you got ads, I don't like them. You know, and I'm like, damn. That's shooting me down real quick. You're, you're allowed to like and dislike my comic for any reason. You can say, nah, the color's too, the character's too dark. Or the, the story, you know, I don't like the story. Or you can say, uh, what's another one? I don't like the illustration, you know, uh, the page turn, or uh, whatever, the paper. I've heard every reason to uh, deny uh, the title, can't pronounce it. You know, 
I've heard every reason. And I ain't gonna say excuse, because there's reasons. They don't take the books, so it's, it's difference, right? Um, and I don't take it personal, because they don't know me enough to be like, I need to hate on him. At least I hope they don't know me like that. Um, but every reason to not, you know, put a book in the shelf, you know? And for whatever, the, you know, for whatever it's worth, when I go to conventions, every one of my books sell, right? Um, but I understand, I had a comic book, uh, what is it, Cyber Funk Streets, and then I had to, you know, worry about this. It has the Ass Doctor is one of the stories, and just like in Tales from the Crypt, I put, you know, it's a short story uh, collection, and I put the name of the story on the cover, and it says ASS. Oh, my store won't allow you to have curses on the cover, and I'm like, yo. No problem. Actually, I don't even push it to stores anymore. You know, because I told them, I said, yo, you could put a sleeve over it. You could cover it. You know, almost like Playboy magazine. But at the end of the day, you know, it's the cover that sells it. So you can't cover the cover up and expect it to sell just by the title. Um, now, I have not tried to sell it in the adult stores because it's not, um, it's not sex, you know, um, comic. Per se, and I remember when I was looking for advertisers, and I was like, "Yo, I should advertise, you know, condoms. I should advertise, you know, I could go crazy with the advertisements in this story because in this book is already adult, but it don't have no nudity in it, and it doesn't have. It's not really X-rated. It's just adult themed. So I was like, no. Um, so I don't sell it in stores, but it's one of my top sellers and the reason why I didn't change the name to A Doctor or strike out the SS you know um, is because it sells so well at conventions it's ridiculous um, now of course I could do a print run with an altered cover no doubt and I'm thinking about that but I haven't yet because I don't print thousands of comics or you know two or three runs yet um, so when the next Cyberfunk Streets come out, maybe. But with my ads, why I, you know, kind of take issues is because I read Marvel and DC Comics. And I'm not um, um, ignorant to how frustrating it is to be reading a story and an ad pops up kind of right before the action or just even arbitrarily. I don't even think, you know, they try to balance it, you know. Um, and I think <coughs> even some of the indie comics, you know, uh, what do you call it, do that too. So um, for me, I'm like, yo, if, it, it is annoying because sometimes the ads look like a comp, like the comic you're reading, and you are reading and be like, wait a minute, this isn't the story, you know what I'm saying? So or you'll get caught up and they do like two or three pages of ads and then you won't know where the story picks back up and it just disturbs your reading. So I get it, you know, I get it. But see with me, when I do my ads, I'm doing front, back, inside, well I'm doing back cover, inside, front, inside, back, and then I may do a couple of pages at the end, but in my anthologies and pretty much all of my books I promote from within. So I have a comic book story that's my main story. That reads uninterrupted. You get to the end of that 2022 20, page, page story uh, uninterrupted, okay, with no ads. Then I do a preview, three or four pages, sometimes up five pages story after that. Yes, and so when it separates the stories, I do almost a cover for the story to introduce the story, or I do an intro. Um, to it and then because that I look at it as like a commercial break I have no problems doing interior paid in, um, uh, what do you call it ads you know and at the height of my kickstart I was doing a lot of of ads but you know I do anthologies like Cyberfunk Streets has about 9 or 10 advertisers but it's 5 stories so I've got the, the inside cover, inside back cover back cover and um, what do you call it? I have no problem with putting an ad in between 
teach you the stories because you're already going to break. And what I did it, um, I did a, a fun little interview with my characters and um, tossed, like I was a late night talk show, so I tossed it to commercial um, inside. So you could read the book with the ads seamlessly from story to story. So yeah, and um, I challenge anybody to tell me that that is distracting to a reader. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I used to do comic book illustrated ads, and I still do those. But, you know, even with those, it's only between a break in the story. It's not interrupting the story. So, um, and, you know, all of that, you know, you can raise $1,000 just on ads. So sometimes you'll see my Kickstarter where I have 20 backers, 10 backers. And you'll be like, how does this guy get $1,500? Well, you know, I have ads, you know, and that's how I do it. I met this dude who didn't even do Kickstarter. He said he raised his whole comic book with ads. And to tell you the truth, I don't think um, uh, Earth Squadron was a Kickstarter. He got about four or five ads in there. Uh, you never know how much people pay. You know, you barter. Sometimes you barter with people. You know, you did this for me. I'm going to give you a little ad in my bag, man. You know, my comic book. So anyway, um, that's it. I just wanted to throw that out. Yeah, I'm for ads and comics, but they certainly got to be done a certain way. And, you know, I'm against all of the backlash on it. Yes, I'm in my feelings because somebody rejected my comic book. And it's not necessarily about me, but, you know, the people that read the comic book, they got to go to a comic book store. I mean, a comic book convention to get it. These comic books, my comic book's selling out you know, at comic book conventions, you know, or at least all of them are selling, right? So anyway, that's it. I'll, I'm out.